Yay, we're recording. Welcome to Sex Psychics and Psychedelics. Nick, you are my first guest where I'm not doing official introductions. I just want to keep it spontaneous and jump in Let's and do it. say hi. Yeah. And uh, it was just, I love these kind of mysterious ways that we find each other. And it was a um, ayahuasca shaman <clears throat> who told me, because I said, do you know anyone who works with San Pedro? And he said, I know a fascinating guy who works with San Pedro. And in fact, San Pedro gave him the gift of being able to talk to animals. Is this true? Um, partially true. Yeah, partially true. So that was uh, San Pedro was certainly part of it. But um, uh, jumping to the the end of that question, yeah, I, I do I do talk with animals, and, and more importantly, they they say things back because everyone <laughs> every, everyone can talk to something. We all talk to animals. Yes. <laughs> but intuitively talking with animals, yeah, 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 we we, we chat. Wow. Okay. We've, we've got to break this down. Sure. Um, t tell me a little bit about yourself in the world and your work, and then we can kind of hone in on the animals and, and San Pedro. Sure, sure, sure. So, um, so animals showed up for me about a year and a half ago. Um, and I've been doing San Pedro and meditation since 2017. Right. So there was, there's was things that started to show up since 2017, right? The world started. Is this your official work or is it just something you're just a kind of conscious dude? Uh, well, it, it's a yes and. Yeah. So um, uh -huh. for about a year and a half, for about six months when the animals showed up, it was, it was me and the animals. It was me and my cat. It was me and the random dog at Home Depot. It was me and uh, the, the dolphin in Mexico. Like it just started showing up. And then, and, uh, and then, was it this year? Yeah, I guess it was in, in, in December of last year, right before the new year. A friend of mine said, can you do this for other people? And I said, I don't, I don't know. So I went on to Nextdoor, which is, you know, it's a neighborhood app. And I said, my, my name is Nick Musica and I psychically talk to animals. I'm an animal communicator and click here for a free 15 minutes. And, uh, and I just had people fill out a, a little form in Google Docs. And, uh, and when the first woman showed up, I had the Google spreadsheet open. So I could see who was showing up. I was a little anxious about it. And as soon as the first person showed up, you know, the, the row shows up, first name, last name, name of animal, you know, just really basic information. I felt the woman come through and I was like, oh yeah, this is going to work. So I, I talked, I talked to the animal. I think it was like on a Wednesday. And then I got the human on the line on a Friday and debriefed. Here's what the animal said. And at the end of it, she said, well, the reason why I wanted to talk with you is because my former animal communicator died. And me and my friends were looking for a new one. Would you mind if uh, I send you referrals? No, I, I don't mind at all. So that was the first one out of the gate. So I've been talking with animals uh, every, we'll say Wednesday, and then talking to the humans on Friday uh, every week since then. You talk to the animals on a Wednesday yeah. and then the humans on the Friday. Why do you separate it out like that? That's, that's just the process that I have right now. It's, 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 it's way easier to just be in groove with the animal and communication with the animal and not have a distraction with, with the human or anything else going on, right? It's just, it's just me and the, the animal. Mm. Uh, and we just have our conversation. And then um, they're certainly invited into the conversation on, we'll, we'll just keep calling it Friday, like the debrief, de the debrief day. Uh, and sometimes they bring more information, but um, frequently they're just present for the conversation. Just receiving the download. Yeah. Um, so... But this is new in your life. You you weren't a channel or a psychic or an intuitive or anything until yeah. the animals started. Talking. Well, I mean, so here's here's what happened. So it's like, you know, I, I went to a psychic, um, my first psychic, like 17, 18. It was always a curiosity for me. I got introduced to Edgar Casey when I was 17. I picked up a random book um, that my dad had. And, you know, that was the first time that I, I read the, the phrase reincarnation. And I thought, oh, man, like this makes this makes sense for whatever reason, like everything this in this book is just making sense for folks who don't know who Edward Casey is. He's known as a sleeping prophet. Um, I think he, he was active in the fifties. I could be totally wrong about that, but there's a ton of books that are published. Uh, he, he wrote one book, but a lot of folks took his readings. Can you spell his name? Yeah. Edgar, um, E, okay. e D G A R Casey, C A Y C E. Uh, and then there's a ton of books that people authors have grabbed his readings and they, they distill the learnings down into a specific topic, um, be it soulmates or crystals or whatever it may be. Uh, so I got introduced to that like at age 17. And, um, and then things started to get weird for me when I was 20. 
And by weird, I mean, I would start living these snippets of, of real life, but, but, but they, they showed up as dreams, right? So they're, they're called clairvoyant dreams. So I would, I had a dream of seeing, um, a gentleman that I went to grammar school and high school together. I saw, I, I had a dream of him going to the same college I was going to, and I knew he didn't go to this college. He went to a different college. So there's no reason to, for me to even think that. And then it was probably a month later, um, he comes walking through the hallway of the college that I'm in. And uh, I was like, I don't understand why you, you don't go to school here. I do now. Oh, I thought you went to this other school. Well, that didn't work out for me. So I go to school here now. Oh, and, and this was, uh, it was a very strange experience. And I was like, I, it's really good to see you. I got to go. Like it was, it was really hard to like <laughs> comprehend. <laughs> got to get out of yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> very yeah. strange what happened. Uh, but that type of thing showed up for about 25 years, having these dreams, then living them in real life. Uh, it, it's almost like watching a, an episode of some old sitcom that, you know, you've seen it before. Right. And you're like, I know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, all right, that's what happens. Right. And it, it's, it's very familiar. Right. So there was a kind of a collapsing of timelines. And yeah. Was there any rhyme or reason about who you no. were seeing? It all felt really. <laughs> there was good. nothing that was meaningful about yeah. it. Uh, other than it was right. happening, right? And so in 2017, yeah. I thought I want to, so, so a bunch of things sort of came together in 2017 for me. I said, I want to I explore this thing. I want to understand what this thing is. And uh, and a friend of mine introduced me to San Pedro and I started working with this gentleman and taught me about energy and all these things. And so that sort of fast forwarded a bunch of stuff. So San Pedro opened up something and then the meditation started opening up things and the world just started to get different. And so the things that I would experience with San Pedro you know, like hearing, seeing, hearing things and seeing things and feeling things. Well, that wasn't specific to San Pedro anymore. That started to now come into the everyday world. Ah, I see. So Sa San Pedro was a, was a gateway. Yeah. Now let's talk, uh, let's do a bit of San Pedro 101. Sure. Um, I have spoken about it in other episodes and, and want to continue to do more episodes on San Pedro. But for anyone who's just watching this one, listening to this one, San Pedro belongs to the masculine <clears throat> mm -hmm. family and you take over i want to hear your definition of, of San yeah Pedro. yeah it, it's a cactus i've never uh spent time with oh my goodness i'm flaking on it peyote but um peyote. it's um I, I imagine it's similar ish that's just my imagination and well it's met they're both masculine yeah san pedro and and uh, peyote are both masculine but peyote belongs to a very sort of sacred tradition indigenous tradition yeah. that we are not and, and so does san pedro into, south we... south america central oh, it? yeah it yeah it does it so much okay yeah. okay it's just way more i thought it was easier to take and and more well, kind of um allowed <laughs> uh i think because of the ease of which it's grown right? Pe peyote yeah. is, is protected in many, many ways. Uh, and San Pedro yeah. is not, I mean, you can go to choose your favorite garden store and you can find San Pedro there, right? Yeah. Peyote grows in a very specific place in the world and, and, and right. And, and, um, spiritual slash religious, however you want to define it, rituals and cultures, right? It, it's, it's a very different context, but chemically, uh, I'm, I'm going to go out on limb and, and I say that because I don't know. I only had experience with one. They're, they're the same ish. Um, who knows if that how, how accurate that is? And and so I got introduced to it in 2017. And I, um, you know, when I was in my 20s, um, LSD was a thing. Um, mushrooms. I mean, I tried these things. I didn't spend a lot of time with them, but I tried them. And and um, chemical mescaline was was something that I experimented with. Not, not a lot. Again, not a lot. So I was comfortable with the chemicals. But, and it was also 25, whatever years later that I'm getting reintroduced to this. And a buddy of mine was framing it up for me. And I felt, you know, again, chemical, okay with the chemicals, but like the context was, I had no idea what people were talking about. And he called me up and he says, you're going to come on Saturday, right? And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, well, you said if, if this other party couldn't make it, then you would sit with, you would come with me. I don't have any recollection about this. And he, and he walked me through what the day would look like. You get there like at nine o'clock in the morning, uh, you leave at eight o'clock and in between you're, you're sitting down, giving your intention and drinking San Pedro, make sure you don't puke it up. Um, and then, and then you talk to God. Right. And I'm like, I don't, whatever. And the more we talked about it, the less interesting it got for me, but I went anyway. 
And, uh, you know, I go there and there's like 20 people and I'm feeling really out of place. So I started to sort of do what I do and just ask questions. What, what brought you here today? And I remember one woman being a little anxious and excited saying, well, if you had a chance to talk to God, wouldn't you be here? And I'm thinking I am here. I have no, but also I don't, <laughs> I, I don't really identify with that statement. I don't, I don't. Well, well, tell me about that. Why? Because you don't believe in God or? <laughs> My experience with the chemicals and understanding where I was at that day were just so separate that I, at the, at the time trying to figure out what was happening and why am I even here? Just those dots just didn't connect. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, skipped to five hours later, four hours later on that day. And it was, I probably came out of it way too early, way too early. Uh, cause I got, I got information and then I was like, this is amazing. This, this is fantastic. This, this thing, like you see things and you have this communication with, um, the best way I can describe it is there is a guide. There is a spiritual guide that walks you through your time when you're, when you're with San Pedro. Um, and that was, that was amazing. That was amazing. And so since then, every six to 12 months, I'm spending time with that cactus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what would you say you learned from the cactus that first mm. night or from the guide? Of the cactus? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, there, there is a book by um, Carlos Castaneda, uh, The Adventures of Don Juan or something like that, right? There's a couple of them. And in the book, he's working with a spiritual teacher. And he's questioning why we're doing all these things. And I, I think this was specifically about San Pedro, this line. And he said, because it helps you live the right way. Hmm. Yeah, it does. I mean, it shows you what you need now to progress forward. And I, I think for, for me, that wraps up all of the, all the experiences. I mean, we could talk about what those individual experiences are, but at the level of why do you keep on going back? Because it, it keeps me going down this path straight and narrow. I mean, it opens up this connection that is wide open and you're just receiving and having a conversation uh, without mm -hmm. any effort. I mean, meditation, when you get good at it, it's less effortful, but there's still effort. And this is... Uh, you know, consume the cactus and you're in the space. Yes, it's very direct. I think I've taken it four times yeah. and two of those have been mixed with mushrooms. Um, my takeaway so far, and I feel like I've just scratched the surface, um, is that it's a very direct teacher mm -hmm. and a very straightforward mm -hmm. teacher and very much about presence it feels much less interior than say an ayahuasca journey which will sort of sweep you into the furthest reaches of your imagination and your lineage and for me san pedro is very much about sort of being here now yeah. i have one really remarkable experience well i've had a couple but but one <laughs> remarkable experience was um i had a bunch of ladies come over to my house to do a san pedro ceremony mm. with a shaman i met um and we were all going deep into our stories and I love stories and I'm a very curious person. And so I was, you know, kind of like rubbing my hands together on a metaphorical level, like, Ooh, this is going to be juicy. I'm going to hear everyone's stuff. And, and San Pedro switched off my hearing. I literally couldn't hear what the women were saying. I could feel it. So my empathic attunement was completely on and I would find myself crying at times mm. or swelling with happiness or something, but I was completely deprived of content <clears throat> and I <laughs> was like, why, what's going on here? And the, the voice, the guide, the medicine, whatever you want to call it, my higher self said, not everything is for you. Mm. And it was this kind of smackdown in a way that I think was really, really healthy. It felt like a really healthy correction for me as someone who's a sort of busy body of the mind, you know, it kind of dropped me into my, my body and my presence. And it felt like this lesson in, you know, if you feel it, then it's for you. Like if you feel someone else, then it's for you. But if you're just thinking about it, 
and having an opinion. That's bullshit. Mm. It's just a fucking waste of time. Yeah. And so I have really welcomed it. It's felt very fatherly to me as someone who hasn't had real fathering mm. in their life. I felt like I've had some from this, from this medicine, this kind of like stern but very helpful <laughs> kind of advice. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'm really, really interested in it and also find it a little bit daunting. <clears throat> Why so? Like it's definitely, well, it's just, it is stern. There's serious lessons. And uh, the other aspect actually is nausea. So I <laughs> very recently, it's funny, I've been very recently um, called to it. In fact, I just went to Ashland to visit a uh, wonderful San Pedro shaman called Nathan. You might have run into him who um, grows San Pedro and, and um, tobacco and also holds ceremonies. And I'm going to interview him too. Um, so I'm definitely kind of on a bit of a bit of a quest with it. And I tried some of his medicine um, actually in my backyard in in Ojai with a friend and I felt very nauseous. And so that got I don't know if it got in the way, but it was it was kind of a big feature of the journey that didn't make me longing to do it again. Um, and but I did find it helpful. I felt it was, you know, it helped me drop into my body and this is a funny connection with you. Suddenly I had these big animals in my yard who had never visited before. <laughs> it was like these like mega animal vegetation. That's cool. And I was like, this has to be, this has to be connected. That's super cool. It just cool. felt so medicinal. Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. Yeah, can we, can we talk about the nausea for a second? Please, yeah, please. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there, there's two versions of it. One is... Uh, like the physical reaction you have to it when you're when you're taking it down, right? Like there's it, it's not it's not pleasant. It's not for folks who have never taken it. Like it's yeah. not pleasant. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And so there's there's about like 45 minutes or an hour. You got you need to keep it in your body or else you're starting all over again. And then, and then once the medicine is in you, there's a different version of nausea that could show up, which is working through whatever you're working through, and and it's not. We don't call it puking. I do, uh, probably too frequently, but it's called purging, right? You're 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 getting rid of yeah. something, and that's really the right context. I wasn't purging, but maybe I hadn't had enough, and maybe I needed okay. to. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I really don't. Okay, I don't really. Yeah, I'm I'm really on the fence about this whole world of of purging because um, I've now, you know, as I'm sure you have, I've I've run into such a range of medicines on my journey mm -hmm. some don't make you nauseous and they do take you to very expansive and helpful <clears throat> places this whole purging thing is tied up so much in traditional shamanic tradition and and there's this idea of suffering you know that that this is good like we earn our we earn our medicine we earn our realizations we earn through the purging through the processing of the shame and the bottom of the barrel feelings yeah. and look it it makes sense i just don't know i don't know if i completely buy into it there's another way of looking at it which is people have been unfortunate enough to not not be able to find the really smooth rides yet. Yeah. you know like if you can have a smooth ride and get to god and you can have a, a ride where you're throwing up the whole way and get to god like I don't know. Wouldn't it potentially be masochism to thro to choose the throwing up? <laughs> right? so I, yeah, I, I would say like I'm probably on tenish San Pedro journeys, give or take. And um, for a while, I I just watched and heard other people purging, and I had no ex n that none of that happened to me. Um, and it was it was sort of distracting at first. Right. And it's almost like it was almost interrupting my good time and my connection, right, in some ways. Yeah. And then probably like the third or fourth time sitting with the cactus, I thought, oh, but that's the work that's being done. Like there, that's there's something admirable about that happening. And then and then there was one day I was sitting with the cactus and I was like, oh, no. And 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 I'm feeling a little nauseous, and then all of a sudden it's like it's like having rice on on the stove, right? Like everything is fine, and then all of a sudden it's going all over the place, and that's sort of how I felt. <laughs> and I'm I'm darting to what is now my favorite palm tree, and and just letting loose on the palm tree, and it was awful. It was awful at the time, and then afterwards you realize, but that was the that was the shit that had to get released. Uh, yeah. And and so, I mean. 
I'm not going to say I'm looking forward to puking, purging again, but, but the, the benefit of it, I think I, for me anyway, there, there was a benefit of it. I mean, it, it cleared some things. I, I don't know about, yeah. I don't know about suffering in it, but for the- I think when you realize what it is, and that's definitely, you know, the encouragement of uh, probably most shamanic traditions that involve purging is that like, you know, what is it that you're wanting to throw up? And then sometimes when you make that connection and you're like, oh, it's my mother's guilt. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, Bleh! you know, and then it's like, yay, I got rid of my mother's <laughs> yeah. guilt. You know, it's like, that's nice. Um, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But I, I do see the, I do see the, I get it. I get the point of it. Um but I'm not sure. And definitely if you have a journey where you're just feeling nauseous and you don't connect it to, oh, yeah, yeah. if you don't find the connection and you don't release it, yeah. it's just kind of a bummer basically. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah um, I've seen people do that and yeah. you sort of don't, you sort of want to go one way or the other, like it has to go away or you got to yeah, let exactly. it rip. Yeah. It's one of the two. Yeah. I think that's a good point. I think if I was in that situation again, maybe the, the antidote would just be more medicine. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> just take more. But um, but I want to get back to the animals because mm. I I definitely was feeling the, the animals on San Pedro and I thought that oh this is funny because I'm going to talk to the animal guy and maybe we can connect some dots and so so tell me how did the animals appear to you first yeah. through the San Pedro? <clears throat> well, it wasn't first through San Pedro. It was first through oh. it was first through a psychic here in Carlsbad. My my wife and I went to a psychic fair in Carlsbad, and um. Uh, we, we walked the floor one way, didn't see anyone, and and then we walked the floor in the opposite direction. Right in front of us, there was this woman, Medium Adelita, and it said Psychic Medium on it, on, on the sign. And I'd never been to a medium before, and like just really wasn't part of my, wasn't my thing. Been to a psychic, but not a psych, psychic medium? Mm, not so much. And uh, But I looked at my wife and I said, hey, Jewel, what, what, what do you think about her? I thought I just thought she'd be good. And my wife said, that sounds great. Why don't you go first? And so I sat down with her and... You know, within the first 30, 30, 60 seconds, whatever, she starts by drawing this heart and she says it's either a former romantic relationship or it's an animal. And the message is you did too much. And and like immediately I'm just like bawling my eyes out. It's my cat that comes through. He was 22 years old when he passed. And the last two years of his life were going back and forth to the vet to, to really just, you know, uh, address all the issues of old age as best you can, mm-hmm. right? Getting him hydrated, checking the food, making sure the blood work is as best it can possibly be for a cat that's that old. Uh, so so the, the summary of you did too much was right on. And and so like now I'm going, oh shit, this is real. Like this is like I'm catching up to the reality of what's happening in front of me. <clears throat> and, but she's continuing. And she says, they, my guides are show, now showing me Dr. Doolittle. They're showing me that you can talk to animals and it's going to be easy for you. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's, there's no reason to think that's true, but that's a hundred percent true. And, uh, and I just connected with her like last week and, and I shared that with her and she's like, you gave me this like side eye look and, and what I, <laughs> what I didn't have a chance to tell her was, well, what you don't know was in, uh, f- like five months prior to you saying this to me, my little girl cat, cause I stressed her out, bit, bit my finger hit the bone, I ended up in the hospital for four days with a bone infection. Um, so this is funny that your guides are saying you're going to have, you're going to talk to animals, right? There's like, there's the humor of the universe was just palpable. And then a month after the little girl puts me in the hospital, uh, a friend of mine introduced me to the topic of animal communication. And she told me the story and like, I just found it fascinating. And so I picked up a book and I was just enthralled with this book of, oh, you could really talk to animals. These stories are amazing in here. Um, and so that, that's where the side egg came from. But, you know, I, I really thought it was true when she said it. And so I went home and I did a little meditation, what I was typically doing. And I tune into my living cat, Chucky, and I get this big, bright light. Wait, Chucky is not the little girl cat. No, different cat. The one that did not bite me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's Ninja. She okay. she lives okay. up to her name. Um, yeah, I do because I do want to know what the message of Ninja was. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, you have a lot of time sitting there in the hospital, right? And yeah. um, you get a th- th- this is what I came out of. I came out with just a great appreciation of, of what I can be doing where I live. I'm just watching the traffic go up and down the five, wondering where people are going. 
And so this appreciation of where people are going and what they're doing and also, you know, appreciating, you know, people taking care of me in the hospital. There's a lot of good caretakers there. So I, I walked out with a lot of appreciation. But why did Ninja bite Oh, why? You? Yeah, so because I did not listen yeah. to her because uh, Mike the carpet guy came over and I was trying to wrangle the cats and put them in their respective yeah. bathrooms, something I've done repeatedly uh, every time he comes over. But I was impatient and I was, so here, here's, here, here's the quick animal communication lesson 101. Animals pick up on your emotions. And so I was stressed. And I, mm. I, I was in a hurry and she was apparently taking on that, that energy. And she thought, well, there's something wrong here. And so when I picked her up, there's something wrong and she reacted. So mm -hmm. that's how that happened. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. And so, so I come home from, from seeing Adelita and I, I did the meditation that I typically do and tune in my tune into the living cat, Chucky again, who didn't bite me. And I, uh, I suddenly see this bright light. And it's the type you would read about that's associated with like spirit guides or angels or something like that, higher level beings. And I thought, no, well, that's not my cat. You know, he shits in the box. Sometimes he shits on the floor, but he, he's not a higher level being. That's not what's happening here. So I called her up and uh, I said, this isn't easy. Never mind. Yeah. You know, like it's not working. Never mind being easy. Like, and she said, you're expecting things to show up in a very specific way. Like just be open to the information and what you get is what you're going to get. All right. So so I decided to give it another shot and I bought more animal communication books and I set up uh, readings with animal communicators to see like, how does it work? What can I learn? How do, you know, what's going on here? Mm. And one day I'm, I'm standing up from my dining room table to come to this computer for a zoom meeting like this with an animal communicator. And I get this quick flash and I see return of the Jedi, I see now the return of the Jedi, it's the ghosts of Obi-Wan and Yoda. And I, I know that I'm being shown this student teacher relationship and I know that it's coming from Chucky and, uh, and I realize I'm not, the, I'm not the teacher here. I'm the student. And now I'm reflecting on that light, which was his introduction to me. And so I get on the line with the animal communicator and she's like, do you know who he is to you? Mm, I do. He just showed me. And now we have a conversation about what all that means. So, so what is Chucky teaching you? Yeah, I mean, he is, he's amazing. So his, his role, as far as I can see, is uh, keeping me open, correcting, and showing me how all of this works. So he's been very uh, instrumental in terms of corrections. Like when I'm doing something that's maybe not the right way to do something, he will correct it. Um, mm. He's done that multiple, multiple times. Uh, and, and, and so there, there, I think there's two aspects of him, how he shows up for me. One is that teaching me how to do things like really being a guide around this topic for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. and the other in a 3d element. I mean, he, he's all, they're all here to teach us lessons. All the animals are here to teach us lessons. So that little boy cat will cry and, or be waiting for me every night between seven o'clock and eight o'clock night to play every night. And, and it's because I don't have a great relationship with work. And I, and I work too much and I don't, I don't play enough. And so his lesson is like, come on, break out of your garbage and come play. And he does it every night. And every, every one that I talk to, um, it, it, it sort of sounds like what I just said, like, tell me why my cat likes to play so much. And the conversation typically ends up, well, how come you don't play enough? Right. That, but it, that's yeah. the words are different, yeah. but that's the conversation with everyone mm. in one form or another. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally totally relate to that with my my dog like he's just like the most sublime idiot you know he just shows me the deliciousness of I mean I'm this is very much my archetype anyway or one of them but is like the fool you know mm. it's just like the just like the deliciousness of you know of of nonsense of emptiness yeah. of of the for very the fun of beginning it. of the journey yeah. for the fun, why not for the joy why not exactly it's it's really it's really heaven um yeah i mean it it makes so much sense to me that that animals are teachers i mean i could just there seems so much power even in in an individual animal um to teach that i sort of feel like if we stopped all other animals and just uh, all other medicines yeah all other medicines and just focused on animals it would be more than enough. And it sort of makes me realize like we're, we're sort of cluttered in abundance in terms of 
what we have around us and what we can learn from. I mean, we can learn from anything. Everything. You know, everything. everything. And then animals are so fully loaded. It's like, it's, it's ridiculous, yeah. honestly. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. So, so I'm going to, going back again to the San Pedro, yeah. like, so I'm seeing how your individual animals helped you kind of hone in and these psychics around you helped you hone yeah. in. How did the San Pedro help you hone in <clears throat> on the animals? I, I, for, for me, at least initially, it, it showed me what is possible. Like it immediately showed me what's possible, right? There was, there was no limitations. Uh, like with, with, I, I have a really good monkey mind. My, my brain bounces around a lot with meditation, but with San Pedro, it, it's sort of hard to bounce around. It's so, it, it, right, there's so much going on. It's, it's, you're in this container and, and you're, I mean, you can get up and walk around, you can pick up your phone, but I, I don't do that. I just go under a sheet for six hours and I'm with the medicine for that long. Um, so it, it was really helpful to, to take this reality and then start opening it up. Uh, that was the big benefit for me. And then we get into each of the lessons. Every time you sit with the cactus, it's, it's just different every time. Uh, Would you sit with different animals Would different animals visit you on San Pedro? Animals have never visited me with San Pedro. Not, not once. Hmm. Um, the, the one, the one message I, well, there was two times where animals, I, I would say were part of the, the core messaging. One was, you know, when you sit down with whatever psychedelic and you sit down, sit down with plant medicine. Yeah. You, you should be intentional about it. And, and one of my intentions was whatever's in the way, get it out of the way so we can make this animal thing clear. Like, let's get on the path. Yeah. And that was, I think the first time that, um, I purged and, and I, I purged quite a bit. Um, mm. so you know, your wish is granted, right? We got everything out of the way for you. <laughs> and, uh, and then there was one day and this, this was really unique that this never happened quite like this before or after. Um, I start seeing, you know, in your mind's eye, I start seeing these letters forming and it's sort of written out almost like on a chalkboard, but just piecing together. And it spelt out animal awareness. And I'm like, oh, that, that's really clear. And it was really just this past week. Like, and I thought it was awareness for me about the animals. Um, but it was just this past week, I looked up animal consciousness and it said animal consciousness, otherwise known as animal awareness. And I thought, oh, well, that's that's a different way to think about that phrase. Is animal awareness something that you have and you're cultivating or is inside you or is animal awareness something that belongs to the animals? Oh, that's an interesting phrased question. Um, <clears throat> let, let's, I'll answer it this way. Let's, let's see if this does it. Um, we all, all the humans have the capability of tapping into a higher consciousness, right? Just think about it from an emotional perspective, doom and gloom, blame, anger, that's going to drag you down. There's no higher self in that. It lowers the vibration. You can't, you can't get to the higher self when you're there. Joy, having a good time, thinking good thoughts, right? All those things put you up higher. Like you feel it. There's a difference in it. There's a different way of operating in those emotions. So we can, we can strive to get there. Uh, animals, and I would argue anything with a life form, and we can talk about that, has a, has a consciousness. And so once you're up there, you can now access this different conversation. There's access to it. So a lot of folks talk about the consciousness of the mushroom, the consciousness of the plant. It doesn't end there. The animals have the consciousness. The trees outside have a consciousness. Everything with a life force has a consciousness. You're walking on the grass that has a consciousness. Yeah, it does. So if, if you can get to that place, you can have a very, very different experience with the, the things that are around you. And, and to your point, man, like how dense are we in some ways? We're like, we need all of these options around us to, to get to that place, right? Is it plant medicine? Mm -hmm. Yes, no. Right? I don't like plant medicine. I don't like chemicals. Okay. Do you like animals? No, I don't like animals. Do you like nature? I don't like. No, I don't <laughs> like nature. Like, like what? What? Do you like meditation? I don't like, there's so many things. There's so many things you can tap. I like video games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right. So maybe not video yeah. games, but there's so many ways yeah. we can tap into it. It's just all. It's all available for us. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree with that. And um, within animals, do you feel like just as within humans, there are, there's quite the range of oh, consciousness? Yeah. Do you, is it the same in that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's different levels of uh, how they show up. So uh, I'll, I'll give you two, two examples. Like there, there's a woman who, sh who came to me and um, sometimes I get like this initial type of feel for the animal. And uh, I said, you know, it, it, there's two qualities coming through. It was like, I'm, I'm all over the place, but I'm doing it very slowly all at the same time. And she said, oh, that, that's my special needs animal. That's my special needs dog. Okay. Like, so that made sense to her, right? Like, I didn't really know what it meant, yeah. but I said it and she's like, oh, yeah. that's, that's what it means. Right. And then that dog is showing me, like, it was, it was a really clean time. That's a really clean relationship she had with this woman. It's just, the dog is just showing like all the fun things that they like to do together, um, mm. which is cool. And also, you know, for, at least from my perspective, being a skeptical person, like, I had a laundry list of things that I was just saying, like, there's no way to really prove it until I got down to, uh, and I was, and I was hesitant. She's like, just say it. And I said, all right. So wheel of fortune, I heard wheel of fortune. And she said, you know, we watch it every night together. <laughs> right. And, and so like, it was just a joyful time with this individual. Um, yeah. and then there was another woman who showed up. The, the animal liked wheel of fortune or just was saying it like, it's a good time. Like it's, it was, it was sort of giving me a laundry list of the things that I like to do with my human. I see. Got it. Got yeah. It. And, and Wheel of Fortune yeah. was one of those things. Yeah. It was one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Very yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Versus, you know, like some animals show up um, with like, like, a, like something that's sort of pressing. So there was another woman who showed up and her, her request was talk to my dog because it's biting people. Okay. I'll, mm -hmm. Well, I'll talk to your dog. And uh, I get on the line with her and she said, did you talk to my dog? I did. Did you tell the dog to stop biting people? I didn't. Well, why not? Well, what do you do for a living? I asked her. Well, I'm out of work. You're not. You're not out of work. What do you, what do, you do? Well, I'm, I'm a private driver. I, I drive for Uber and limousines. Hmm. How's that working out? Well, I have spinal issues and my doctor says I shouldn't be driving. Because after about an hour or so, my back is really banged up. Okay. Well, here's what your dog said. Your dog said to ask you about your job. And when I asked the dog why, the dog said, because that's what has to change. And so she, mm -hmm. ar she already knew, but the dog was just like, before anything happened, was like, you, get, you better ask her about her job. Uh, mm -hmm. versus, mm -hmm. versus her come from was biting people, right? And the dog's come from mm -hmm. is the job. Mm -hmm. And so like these, these, yeah. these feel like two two very different points of reference. But the lesson here mm -hmm. is, which is, you know, this is the universal type of lesson that shows up frequently is my dog is doing something in 3D. Can we correct that? Well, your dog is doing something in 3D because you're doing something in 3D and your dog is mirroring or modeling your behavior and trying to teach you a lesson very frequently. Yeah. Right. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. are you angry about your job? You are. You are. You're, 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 and your dog is showing you that. Uh, but you're taking yeah. it as my dog yeah. is randomly biting people and it's aggressive. Mm. On the surface, mm -hmm. you can see how that's true. When we start talking about it yeah. and we start to get into the details of your job and how you feel about it yeah. and those emotions, yeah. um, it, it becomes very clear. Yeah. This, the manifestation of biting is just the detail. It's not the root cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm just starting to think about my dog more and more as we talk, of course, Herbie who actually, weirdly enough, has been making little sounds since we've been on this call. He's with one of my daughters who's sleeping in late, and I didn't want to interrupt her call, but I was like, huh, that's funny. <laughs> so I'll be trying to get Nick's attention. They, that like, happens sometimes, yeah. Dying to, dying to have a say. Um, but yeah, I mean, this last weekend, Herbie was was quite like edgy, and he was doing little he's he's chihuahua mix and he's got a tendency to do little snappy bites and he was doing some sort of he was being very like um yeah he was just being really edgy i don't know if if you can tap into him or not now as we talk um or if it would need to be a separate yeah thing, let, let, i'd be happy to do a separate thing for you for sure yeah 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 it's hard to do it like on the spot you need to do for me it like, is separate yeah, space for that i animal. need to be quiet yeah. with it and yeah. yeah yeah really receive yeah that's right 
Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it's very yeah. similar actually so, for the, like like the San Pedro. Yeah. Like I put myself under a sheet and don't come out. Like it's sort of that way with the animals for me as well. Yeah. I think that's what I'm just starting to get because I know I keep circling back to the same question with you, which is like, how is a San Pedro helping you? channel animals or communicate with animals and it seems like maybe the answer if we had to put it in a nutshell would be presence yeah yeah getting really still absolutely it. yeah for sure i mean it it, it was funny um I mean, there's one time i was on san pedro and uh and, and and because that monkey mind for me is at play like with with the meditation and like i was just so in the san pedro that i i lost myself and then every time I found myself, there was this complete difference of losing yourself and then being conscious about it, which was the lesson that I was being taught at the time. Like in order to be like, really feel it, you have to lose yourself. And then when you're like, oh my God, I totally lost myself right there. You didn't. Uh, and it's, and mm -hmm. so that was sort of the lesson, like, here's what you need to do with meditation. You just have to let yourself go and just let it, let it flow. Um, and so the, the, the lessons certainly carry over and, and at least for me my experiences with, with the San Pedro and with meditation, it, it feels like I equate it to like the empire state building. Uh, there's multiple levels, there's multiple floors, there's an observation deck, right? Um, with meditation, you, you can get into like the lobby and go up to one floor, floor one, two, and three, right? Like, and, and depending on how good you are, you can get up to like floor 10 with your meditation or something like that. And you're walking the stairs to get up with San Pedro, the elevator door opens, right? And, and you're greeted by someone you don't know, and you're really not quite sure what to think about them, but you go in there anyway, and they hit the floor, and then you get to the yeah, floor. They decide. Yeah, yeah, and you walk out, yeah. and, and right before that door closes, you go, when are you going to be back? And the doors close, right? And then you're mm -hmm. spending your time there. But it's the same elevator, or I'm sorry, it's the same building, the meditation, the same building, yeah. The same Pedro, yeah. it all comes from the same building. It's all you. Yeah. And yeah. that's the consciousness yeah. of it all, right? So you, you can, you can mm -hmm. work your way up to getting, you know, really close to San, that same Pedro, or, mm -hmm. or I imagine people mm -hmm. do it all the time. Um, mm -hmm. But it is, I, I do think it's the same thing. I think it's really interesting that San Pedro hasn't become uh, more popular, that, you know, it's so, so small compared to ayahuasca, because to me, you know, and I, I tend to sort of gallop ahead in my thinking. So maybe this is just a question of pace. But it seems to me that is the medicine for our times. I feel like what we need is what San Pedro offers, which is more grounding, yeah. more presence, yeah. more embodiment, yeah. more stillness. Um, I feel like Ayahuasca is doing a terrific job of opening up hearts and minds, but it tends to promote also this kind of interiority and fascination with story, um, which I don't get from San Pedro. San Pedro doesn't do the intrigue piece and it doesn't yeah. chime in so much with the sort of psychotherapeutic models where you're going into mom and dad and what happened and all of that kind yeah. of um, the emotional body in that way, it, it seems to be bringing something else into the foreground. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've heard people talk about ayahuasca, like your, your soul gets shot out into the universe and you're, you're, you see aliens and different beings. And that sounds like a hoot. It sounds like a good time. Um, and in San Pedro, my experience has always been this body on this planet in this lifetime, like yeah, that, th yeah. this is what this is yeah. all about right now. And I, and I like yeah, that. Yeah, I love that. I like that a lot. Mm, I love that too. And, and that also connects me back to the animals as well. It's like, here they are. Yeah. Here, here they, I mean, here we are, A, eh? <laughs> but here they are. I mean, it's insane that we live on a planet where elephants and crocodiles and cats and monkeys and lizards exist. I mean, my mother always says we're in a world where caterpillars exist. Mm. I mean, say no more for God's sake. It's a fucking miracle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
isn't that enough to bask in ecstatically for the rest of your days? I mean, for God's sake, it's like yes, it's I think it is nuts. Yeah, <laughs> it probably is for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, um, so yeah, so we're surrounded by this extraordinary abundance, and yet we have this sense of scarcity. It's a very strange, so strange, strange predicament that we're in. Yeah, yeah. We 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 all we created it, right? We we did. Yeah, we created it. Yeah, we it's our, our own it from, making. From, from inner division. That, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So let's see. So if, if um, I want to round up soon because I think it's so beautiful to keep these, you know, digestible, these sessions. Yeah. And I, I do have a tendency to, to bang on. But, but if there is a message from the animals thus far that you could kind of digest and give to the listener what would it be <clears throat> for everyone that i've talked with e even the one that i was um relaying earlier where it was just showing the good time right there's there's always and it is very so you're right it is very similar to the san pedro it there's always a lesson about now it's it's mm. it's very very rarely about like people ask well, where did the animal come from most of the times they don't give a shit most of the times they're like, they're pointing back to this house, this relationship. Um, and so it's really about the now. It's not the past. It's not the future. It's about the now and what's relevant right now. Because what's, what's relevant now is not going to be what's relevant tomorrow or, or in a month. Now is what really matters. And if we address the things that are now, then we can, we're in a way better position to get the next lesson because there's, there's a slew of them. Like they don't stop. Right. And, and so if you want around, if you want to keep on running around the track to learn the same lesson, by all means, keep on going, but know that there's, there's way more lessons to be learned. And that's sort of the fun of all of it. Right. Sometimes they're kicking kicks in the pants. Frequently they're the kick, kick in the pants. Um, but, the, but that's why we're here or else what are we doing here? And so the, le the lessons that the animals bring forward are the things that we should be working with or be aware of today for, for everyone that I've talked to, that's true. Beautiful. I love that. Thank you so much. And um, just tell me two more things. One is like, any wish you have for the, the future of, of your work um, and how we can find you if you want to be found. Yeah, thanks. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, you can find me at mycatschooledme.com because he did. Beautiful. And uh, that's on Instagram. There's a half-baked profile on Instagram. It's got a couple of pictures up there. A couple of things are going on there. Uh, I'm trying to get motivated to do more than what's there. Uh, but mycatschoolme.com, you, um, you can schedule an appointment there for a reading. Um, and, and what I'm looking to do is really talk to as many animals as I can. It, for me, it's a lot of fun. And it's very helpful for the animal and the human. Uh, and what I would love to do is get in front of as many people as I can to share the stories of and help them communicate with their own animal, be it on podcasts or a stage or whatever it is. But I'd love to get in front of more people so they can hear these things. Because, mm. um, I mean, because it sounds crazy, right? But it's but it's not. And that's... I think it's beautiful. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's something you could also do on your Instagram is if you get permission from whoever it is that you could just do little animal channels and then you have like a little um, animal TV channel through your Instagram where you're going. So I just sat with Herbie and da, da, da. I would give you permission. Although I know that Herbie's going to be like, should tell you about what an asshole I am, but I'm going to be brave and I'm going to let the world hear it because I'm not only an asshole. And, um, but yeah, seriously, I think, I, I mean, I'd, I'd be fascinated by that personally. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for you to talk to her because he is a trip. He's a ton of fun. And uh, you guys are probably going to have a good laugh I, together. I would love to. Um, <laughs> be so good. Nick, thank you so much. Uh, what a pleasure. What a joy. I love, I love your openness and I, I love what you're receiving. Thank you. It feels like good medicine for all of yeah, us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks thank for having you. me on, Jane. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to stop there.